saints i hope that you are doing well today wow this past sunday as we celebrated our lord's resurrection what a blessing what a blessing the day was absolutely beautiful and the fellowship of the saints the agape love that was tangible with the saints as they fellowshiped with one another enjoyed a great meal also you know we worship the lord he inhabits the praises of his people his word encouraged us we were edified there's nothing greater to me than to serve the lord's people that is my greatest joy and let me tell you something uh, let me just share this with you our lord has ascended into heaven physically right and so he is not here in physical form that is we can't see him or embrace him we can't do that because he's not here physically however get this and this is why i have so much joy in serving the saints he dwells within his people the believer has christ living inside of them and though i can't touch jesus and see him and minister to him directly i can minister to his people and you know what jesus said jesus said this for as much as you've done it to the very least of my brethren you've done it unto me so here's something that i know that i know and you need to know that when you minister to a brother or a sister one in whom christ dwells <laughs> because they're born again. They have Christ living inside of them. Christ, the hope of glory, right? We talked about it on Sunday. They have Christ in them. And so as you minister to them, you are ministering to the Lord. Do you understand? And that's why it's such a joy. Oh my goodness, listen, for me to see the saints worshiping the Lord, for me to see the saints fellowshipping with one another. My wife and I were talking about it what a joy it brings to our hearts that's where the joy is that's where ministry is a blessing i am so incredibly blessed you know when i'm teaching the word of god and uh by the spirit trying to encourage the saints and edify the saints challenge the saints and they're attentive and, and they're listening and they have smiles on their faces. They're just so happy to hear the word of God and to embrace the word, to appropriate the word and be challenged by the word. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it in the whole world. I live for that. I'm like, Lord, strengthen me for the work of the ministry. Encourage me in the work of the ministry. Lord, um, continue by your spirit to grow me so that I can just serve God's people. That's so much joy. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday, it was like the pinnacle of joy. I was overflowing with just uh, joy, joy, unspeakable and full of glory to see the saints fellowshipping with one another, uh, laughing, encouraging one another, worshiping the Lord together. I can't say enough about it. And the day was absolutely beautiful as we um, celebrated our Lord's resurrection. He's not dead, he's alive. My Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. So this week, we're taking a little bit of a rest, but I couldn't stay away from this opportunity to encourage you again. Um, this is gonna be short. So let me give you a short devotion. Oh my goodness, you know, um, the children of Israel, they were enslaved for oh such a long, long time. They cried out for a deliverer. They cried out to the Lord. And it says, the Bible says that the Lord heard their cry. Isn't that, right there, that's a blessing. That when we actually cry out to the Lord, that the Lord hears us. And that's true today. That's not just true. Uh, in their case, so many hundreds, thousands of years ago, it's still true today. The Lord hears the cries of his people. That prayer request that you have, the agony in your heart, the moaning, even the moaning. So sometimes, you know, things can get so difficult that it's just moaning. And much of the Israelites were moaning under the oppressive slavery of the Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. God heard their cry. God sent a deliverer. You know his name? Moses. Moses, exactly. God sent Moses. And then you have the plagues. Ultimately, Pharaoh lets the people go. The people are now free. And they, they're free 
with an amazing promise. God says, I'm going to not only, look at God, God is amazing, right? Not only are you going to be set free from bondage, oh, but I got a land prepared for you. I have a promised land for you. And in this land, listen at this, if God's blessings are not abundant, okay, this land is going to be a land flowing with milk and honey. What does that mean? It means provision will be in abundance. You will have lack of nothing. That's basically what that means, okay? You're going to have everything. I'm going to provide it for you, okay? So not only am I going to set you free from slavery, He's such a good God and merciful God and gracious God and abundant God. I'm going to bring you into a land where you're not going to lack anything. Absolutely nothing. Oh man, what a great promise, huh? What a great promise. And they're so close to the land. So close, in fact, that Moses, he sends 12 spies into the land to spy out the land. 12, a leader from each tribe. The 12 tribes. One leader from each. Ah, oh, saints, get this. They come back. The 12 spies come back. Ten of them say, wow, listen, look. The land is just like the Lord said. Absolutely. Si, señores, si, señoras. Uh, yes, sirs, and yes, ma'ams. It is what God has said. Come on. God cannot lie. God is not a man that he should lie. When he says this is what it is, that's what it is. And they come back and they say, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh my goodness, and the grapes. They bring back evidence. Okay, evidence. Grapes that had to be carried. Two guys had to carry grapes in between themselves with a, with a pole, okay? I'm talking grapes the size of bowling balls. One grape feed a whole family. <laughs> You tell me, how good is God, right, when one grape is feeding the whole family? Man, I go to buy grapes now, and grapes are like this, like the size of small marbles. And they're expensive. Everything's expensive. Real expensive. Inflation is a thing, y'all. Can you imagine? Oh, man, if they had stopped there, they would have been golden, but they didn't. They keep going. And now they're all, these 10, these are leaders. Leaders are the ones that are supposed to have courage. They're supposed to edify the people, encourage the people. They're supposed to infuse faith, like encourage their faith, encourage them to grow, encourage them to trust the Lord. That's what leaders are supposed to do. You know what these guys are doing? These 10 guys are saying, watch what they say. Oh yeah, there's, but there's no way. There's no way we can go in there. Their cities are fortified. And listen, there's giants. Ay, ay, gigantes. There's giants in there. We can't go in there. It's over. We're like grasshoppers. We're nobodies. And listen, it's true. They are nobodies. I mean, they just came out of slavery. They, these people, these God's people, they're not, they're not military people. They're not strategic that way. They're few in number. It's a done deal. They're absolutely right. They are right. But you know something? God said, I'm giving it to you. God made them a promise. I'm giving you the land and I'm going to defeat your enemies. I'm going to be with you. Come on. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to defeat your enemies. I've given it to you. It's yours for the taking. How amazing is that? God with them. Listen, do you know that you with God, you're the majority. Who's going to come against you? What enemy? What, what impossibility are you facing? God is with you. There's nothing impossible for him. And so these guys, the second they start spreading unbelief and discouragement, it's like a virus. Two million people are infected. Two million people don't want to go in there. There's like, nope, we're, there's no way we're going in there. Wait a minute. Watch. God just set you free from slavery. You saw plagues. You saw God do miraculous things. You saw God drown the entire Egyptian army in the Red Sea. And now you're not going to go into the promised land after all that God has done for you. Saints, you know what? That's us. That's absolutely us. Of course it's us. 
we can't be too judgy on these people. No, because that's just like us. How many promises has God not given us? How many promises are not in the Bible? And they're ours for the taking, but oh no, you know what? I know, man, I know, I know Jesus said not to worry, but here I am. I'm very, I'm very anxious. Be anxious for nothing. And everything by prayer and supplication, make your request. With thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Nah, you know what? I don't think that, well, you know, what if I pray? And if God doesn't do anything, I don't even, I'm not sure that he even hears me. There, there are people like that. They choose worry instead of trusting the Lord, believing his promises. You don't have to live in sin. God's giving you victory. All, all the giants in the land, God's going to defeat for you. What are giants? Giants are sin giants. They're hardship giants. Trials are giants. All kinds of giants. But the Lord says, I'm with you. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to live in perpetuating sin. I have victory over sin. Trust me. Believe me. Appropriate my promises. Take them unto yourself. No. Nope, 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 nope. Can't do that. Hmm. How it must grieve the heart of the Lord. We have so many promises, and yet unbelief. We're stricken, a lot of us stricken by unbelief. Painful. Painful for us, I'm sure it causes the heart of God to grieve. Mm. But then there's two. Again, guys, these are leaders. These are supposed to encourage the people. They spread unbelief and discouragement. Two million people done. They're over. But not all of them are like that. The great majority are like that. Two of them. Their names, Joshua and Caleb. They say, come on, stop this nonsense. Are you guys kidding? Listen, God said the land is ours. And God says he's going to defeat the enemies. He's with us. We're a majority, guys. Come on. What is all this wailing and crying and we can't go in there and this is impossible? God is big. These giants are small. What do you think? The giants are bigger than God? No way. Not true. <laughs> we're going to go in there. And we're going to do this thing with the Lord. We're going to work with the Lord. We're going to see the Lord do great, beautiful, wonderful things. Mm -mm. They weren't heard. They were not heard. Saints, we need to be more like Joshua and Caleb, don't we? I know I do. I can, I can get a little down and depressed and God's not going to do nothing for me. Oh man, but the spirit of Joshua and Caleb. You know that years later, 40 years later, 40 years they wandered in the wilderness, not being able to enter into the promised land because of unbelief. 40 years later, these guys are older now. And you know what they say, both Joshua and Caleb, we're as strong this day as the day 40 years ago that we you know, weren't allowed to go into the promised land because of unbelief. We're still as strong this day to go in there as we in forty years our hearts didn't change. Oh man, that's I wanna be Joshua like him and like Caleb. No uh 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 no no what are you talking negativity for? Yeah, that's impossible. We can't do that, Johnny. No, yeah, it's just hard. Like, you know, these are like basement people that are like Everything is a difficulty. Everything's a hardship. Everything's an impossibility. There's giants everywhere. No, you know, it's not going to be possible. That's just too difficult. Uh, no, no, we just have to live here in fear. Come on. No, uh-uh. Can't be. Won't be. Lord Jesus, make us into men and women that believe your promises that are walking in faith, that are appropriating these promises and are walking in victory and watching you do amazing things in our lives, in our families, because we believe you, because we trust you, because we rest in you. Ah, yes, saints, there, there is where the joy is. Resting in the Lord, trusting him for everything. That's where the joy is. May you be encouraged this week as you walk with him. I pray this short devotion has uh, edified you and encouraged you to believe the Lord, to trust him, to walk with him, and to enjoy fellowship with him this week.